Hello everyone. Today I'll be doing a short little tier list of all of the different distributions I have ever used and also a few that I've included that I have not used but I really want to give a try. Um, it's pretty simple, not much, so let's just jump right into it. Asahi Linux. Um, I personally think Asahi Linux is an amazing distro. They're doing something that no one else is doing by making Linux accessible on Apple Silicon devices. It really is something that no one else is doing in this space. Overall, Asahi Linux, I think, deserves a strong S just because of, of the uniqueness of what they're doing and the difficulty of what they're doing. They really have no competition and no one who does what they do better they're doing something unique so they 100 percent deserve an s next up is linux mint linux mint it was actually my first distro i installed on my desktop it i really enjoyed it actually it's i be still believe to be the best beginner distro and the best just works distro because it is able to it allows the user to be as technical or as non-technical as they want to you don't have to use the terminal for anything or you can use it for everything it, it that flexibility really allows it to be a really good distro for first users for both people who are trying linux because they want to just get better at it or and they're like tech savvy and such or people who are trying Linux just cause for privacy reasons and they're not tech savvy and they but they want the privacy of Linux and such and the customization so Linux Mint really offers a lot to both of those groups so I think Linux Mint deserves a pretty high ranking again Maybe A, I'm thinking. Yeah, I think A. It's, a, in my opinion, the best uh, beginner's distro. Okay, next up we have Ubuntu. Ubuntu, or Ubuntu, I believe is another pretty good distro up until the point when they started including Snap. Um, it's the most common server distro out there. Most Linux servers you will find, at least non-enterprise ones, like user servers, are probably going to be Ubuntu server. It is, and just because of its popularity, it no matter how you spin it, it will still be popular, and a lot of people will still use it. Um, hmm, I personally, in Ubuntu, I personally believe it does deserve some credit for just spreading Linux and spreading Linux ideologies. If it doesn't, even though it doesn't do that in the best way possible, it's still something that uh, increases the popularity of Linux and the Linux desktop. So, I think it definitely deserves some credit for that, although I may myself not really recommend it to people and not use it myself, I still think it deserves some credit. I have used Ubuntu as another one of those first distros when I was starting out in Linux, so... I don't remember too much about my experience. I remember being pretty short. But yeah, I think I'd give it a C or a D. I think a D. Okay, Manjaro. Manjaro is the just works distro of Arch. It really it's really well made. I think I think it's basically the same as Linux Mint but for Arch, instead of being Ubuntu-based. It really provides a lot. I remember one of one of my favorite parts about uh, Manjaro when I was just starting out with Linux was because of how easily 
uh, it had their, they had this um, GPU driver utility that would just uh, let you download the GPU drivers without going into the terminal or looking up any commands or anything. It would allow you to download the NVIDIA proprietary drivers, the AMD drivers, or the AMD proprietary ones. And I think that's another, it's like features like that that make it a really good just works and also beginner distro. So I think it also deserves to be up there in A tier with Linux Mint. Next up is Fedora. Fedora is a distro I have have actually probably the least experience with just because of how recently I'm getting into trying Fedora and actually enjoying it. Um, I did try to install Fedora on an old Intel MacBook. I remember I was having some troubles with it just because it was one of the stupid MacBooks with the touch bar and no escape key. So I was, I was stuck in Grub and I had to link up another keyboard. It was it was it was very messy and that's why I didn't end up using it just because of the design of that MacBook really did not work with Linux because of the touch bar. But overall, I, well, I'm using Fedora now with Asahi Linux and I'm actually enjoying it quite a bit. I think it is, it is a pretty good distro. It has, it has a lot to offer. DNF is really nice. I personally was initially just be, from using Arch so much, I believe I didn't I didn't think I would enjoy DNF because kind of get into the whole idea of using your package manager for absolutely everything and not then not knowing if like the Arch user repository is so powerful that after using it, I thought I wouldn't like any other package manager, but I was wrong. I actually really like DNF and a lot of, uh, you can just add repos to it and such, and it really does work pretty well for everything. It's easy and fast to update. It really, it's just really nice. I think, I think it deserves to go into B tier. I wouldn't say, Fedora is technically a just works distro, but I have not... I'm really only using it now that I am, I would consider myself a more advanced user. So I, I wouldn't be able to give you the outlook of a just, if of a beginner on Fedora, just because I'm using it now later on. Okay. Zorin. Zorin is quite the controversial one. Um, it, this one, this one is very interesting. Because Zorin was, despite of how controversial it is, was actually the Linux distro that got me into wanting to try using Linux. I It's the first distro I tried in a virtual machine before I even installed Linux Mint. And it was, it was, it was a pretty good experience. Clearly not good enough for me. Um, because I switched to Linux Mint before installing, but it, it was what got me excited about trying Linux and what got me into actually, into actually installing it and using it, daily driving it for the past three, four years. I think despite of how on Linuxy it is, it is good at grabbing attention. It is good at uh, getting people into the Linux community, and just like it did on work on me, I believe it still works on other people, because it looks good, it makes people want to learn more about Linux, and I think, once again, for that, it should get some credit for being the distro that invites people to try Linux. So... Despite the controversy, I think it's another distro that deserves a D. KDE Neon. Uh, this is a distro I also used for quite a while. It was back when I wanted to try KDE. I thought by using the KDE Neon distro, I would get the best KDE experience. You kind of do get that. 
but it does lack in a lot of other ways, which I personally, it struggles with basically, it's Ubuntu, except it's barely functional in the Ubuntu department. There's a lot of package manager problems. Um, it does, it the KDE part works amazing, but a lot of package manager issues as you really, because it's it's the exact same distro as Ubuntu, but it, the packager treats it like its own distro. You're unable to download Ubuntu packages onto it. So there's a lot of uh, difficulties with that and having to add custom repos and everything. And it's quite a mess. I definitely don't recommend it as a starting. Uh, uh, it's definitely not a just works distro because anytime you need to download something or install a package, it's quite a struggle. But it is a good reference for KDE and the KDE execution is really, really well made. So I think it deserves E, E tier. You might as well just install Kubuntu, which we'll get to. Okay, NixOS. NixOS is one of the ones that I haven't actually tried yet, but I am have heard a lot about it, and I am actually very interested in it. Um, it does sound like something I would really enjoy. The package manager Nix is really, really well made, and... It allows you to keep your system... It's like it's almost the absolute most stable thing you can. And I've also heard people using it for servers, which sounds amazing. Overall, I think Nix deserves to go into C. I mean, I personally haven't really used it, but I think it's really good. Okay, Ubuntu... This is basically just Ubuntu with KDE as its desktop environment. It's almost exactly like KDE Neon, except better in the package department, which is KDE Neon's biggest flaw. So I believe, so it lets you actually, so it's basically just KDE Neon without the KDE Neon issues. So I think it deserves to go into B tier. Gen 2 Linux, or as some people say, Gen 2. Big debate about that. Kind of like uh, GIF and JIF. But um, Gen 2 Linux is a source compiling distro. And I actually plan to install it on my main desktop soon, or probably later today. And I will also be recording that and... Uh, posting my experience haven't tested it in a VM I'm planning to do something that I don't recommend other people do but um, just figure it out on my hardware system and yeah uh, Gentoo I'm pretty excited about I think it's a really good uh, alternative to Arch especially in terms of performance and also of course huge amount of clout when you use Gen 2 compared to Arch. I mean, Arch, yeah, you get a little bit of clout. Gen 2, that's, you have all the clout in the world. It's awesome. So I think Gen 2 deserves to go into A tier. Arch Linux, I've actually, this is the distro that I've used for the longest time, almost the whole time. At the beginning of my Linux career, I guess, uh, I... Distro hopped a lot, almost between most of these distros, and also, but then after all that, I installed Arch, I learned how to install Arch, and I just started using it full, I just, it just ended all my distro hopping issues, so I switched to Arch and used it since. Up until now, I'm going to be trying again to Linux. So, Yeah. Arch is really good, not a beginner's distro, but if you know what you're doing and you're patient, it's really, really nice. 
I think it, it goes up there in A tier along with Gentoo and Arch. Oh, deep in. Well, th this is this is a distro, right? I mean, it it it, it looks nice. That's probably that's what draw drew me in when I tried it, but I am very certain now that um probably there's probably you know just just a tad bit of spyware on there like just just like the regular amount of uh, Chinese spyware because yeah when you even when you install the distro everything is in Chinese originally um yeah I definitely wouldn't try it again knowing the things that I know now I would not be using deepen but as a beginner the the funky and the cool UI that kind of looks like Mac OS drew me in but I, kind of a mistake right there void linux another one that i have not tried yet but i really want to it's the one that uses the run it uh damien service instead of system d personally that's another one that i'm i really want to try but i have not gotten around to it but since i haven't really tried it i will put it in c tier ubuntu studio Ubuntu Studio is a distro I genuinely just used because I thought I needed multimedia stuff when I really didn't. It, it, it's just Ubuntu. I think it uses XFCE, if I am correct. And it's just Ubuntu with a bunch of pre-installed stuff like Audacity, some, some digital audio workstation stuff. I think KDN Live. That's about it. Um, yeah, it's just Ubuntu, but a little bit better. So I think that goes in C. And then that's the whole tier list complete. But yeah, anyhow, that's that's the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I as I said as I said, I plan to install Gentoo Linux on uh, my desktop I actually bought a capture card just so that I can record the experience and yeah be excited for that video um subscribe if you want to see that um yeah and that's about it I hope you have a great day and I'll see you later bye